So I'm happy to have him. Yes. And I would like to just give you a little bio of him and pray that the internet stay up. So welcome people and you can send some blue art and welcome Donovan Dowie to our show today. Today he'll be teaching us or giving us insights or opening our mind or enlightening us, enlight our darkness of the topic reparation of slavery in Jamaica and the Caribbean. Mr. Dowie is an economist and financial and business consultant is also an adjunct lecturer at, in economic, economic and politics at the Excelsior Community College. He also consulted with consulted for agency such as IDB and for governments in the Caribbean. I will now pass the show to him, and he will get into the meat of the matter. So, welcoming okay. guys with a blue with some blue arts, please. Welcome Mr. Dowie to our show. Thanks Patrice. <laughs> uh, first of all, let me, let me thank you for asking me to come along and to enlighten your, your listeners and your viewers on reparation. First of all, I'm not going to spend a lot of time today on the, on some of the most important aspect. I'm going to leave that for the other two segments because Patrice has asked me to kind of spend the first part of this this discussion or presentation on exactly what reparation is and why the Caribbean and Jamaica specifically have a case for reparation. But let's first of all, some of you might be asking, what is reparation? Well, reparation in a legal sense is is basically a, an injured party saying that the party that has injured them must pay them something or restore them to what they were before. So in right. the case of Caribbean reparation, as it relates to slavery, the descendants of the slave, which is myself and Patrice and most of you listening, is insisting that the people who enslaved our forefathers has a responsibility and an obligation to pay us back, to repair us, to, to pay us back, for, and to atone for all of what they did to our forefathers as slaves. Now, there are some persons, especially the British, who argue that there is no reason why they should pay us anything for the atrocities of slavery. There's no reason for reparation. So of, course we know, of course, we know differently, right? But, yeah. but let us think about a reason why the Caribbean persons like ourselves because of our ancestors who are slaves, have a basis, a legal basis and a moral basis for slavery and a moral basis for the repayment to us because of slavery. Let me right. outline it very quickly. In, in 1804, the abolition of slave, slave, trade, slave trade took place. What was the slave trade? The slave trade was moving Africans from Africa to the Caribbean and to North America. That journey was the most atrocious and the most despicable and repulsive thing that could ever happen to a human being. Oh my God. Call it the Middle Passage, right? Now the right. Middle Passage, if, you, if I try to describe it, most of you will go to your bed tonight and can't sleep. It was, some, it was the most ugly, most despicable thing that you could do to anybody by putting them like sardines in a can and forcing them inside a slave ship and they could, couldn't hardly breathe. Breathe and most importantly, at some point, there are so much persons in the, in the ship that they sometimes have to throw some of them overboard because the ship was too heavy. <laughs> now, let me put it like this. A crime is something that has to be addressed in some kind of way. The person who commits a crime must pay back in some kind of way. Well, hold on, yeah. hold on, Mr. Doe. Yes, hold on. Because yes, I want to keep the person with you, right? Yes. So, um, Dana Van Carr said, end of four, 400 years of slavery. So it's, it, is time, it is the right time. Um, 
Simple Things Outreach Media say, for me, it's like killing my child and paying me money to make up for it. Money can't replace the wrong you did to me. If Vadney TV say, it means paying money to slave and what? No, no, that word, off slavery. Simple Things say, thank God. Um, Welcome, Dana Van, they are welcoming you. Inga say, welcome. I'll try to catch up credential turn up of course man have things to him name don't do it um simple things outreach said so the mega passage worse experience than the holocaust that's true that's true you can go ahead continue right. well all right what the listeners are putting saying to us is that they recognize that they're after four four hundred years of slavery the question is can you actually pay anybody to recompense them for what has happened. The truth yeah. is that you can't. You can't bring back a slave that you were for 90 years as a, and, 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 and bring back to life and tell him sorry and, and restore back everything that he was. First of all, to restore him, you have to take him back to Africa. The crime that mm -hmm. was committed first was not even slavery. The first crime that was committed that it, you took people from Africa against their will. You forced them to come on a shit slave ship and to make them become slaves that's a crime so that was the first crime to, to, first to crime. force them to come on to the ship them. as i yeah. always run a joke and said there's no african slave that bought a ticket on a slave ship to come to the caribbean they were all <laughs> forced to come here now when you force an, 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 a human being to do something against their will that is a crime now the right. british want us to believe that because somebody went to Africa and bought a slave, then that is a legal transaction. Well, let me make it clear to you. The bottom line is that if you force a human being to do something, it's against their human rights. And that is a crime, international crime. It was a crime in 16, the, six, the, 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 the 14th century. It was a crime in the 16th century, the 17th, 18th, and in the 21st century. You can't force a human being into a state of atrocity and you can't call it legal because you bought the person. It is a crime. Now, remember, the law is clear on this. If you benefit from a crime, then the benefit that you have is also part of that crime. And the law has a simple situation like this. If you benefit from the crime, then you are implicitly are explicitly a part of the criminality itself yeah so the shippers the person who shipped the slaves they are part of the crime the person who bought the slave when they came to the caribbean they are part of that crime and while they're on the sugar estate punishing them without paying them that is even a greater crime should we be repaid for that the answer is absolutely yes so reparation right. must and is a legal basis. Anybody who tells you that reparation doesn't have a legal basis, they are crazy. Now, let me tell you why people are arguing that there might not be a legal basis for reparation. Hold, hold that thought for a minute. Hold, hold that thoughts for a minute. Um, so Badu Black's music, Mr. Donovan Dowie, do you know if slave ship had a name or a, or a marking on it? Whoa, very important question. Um, ironically, one of the most well-kept records in mankind in modern time was the ships that went and pick up slaves. And it actually has records that show you how many slaves they picked up, how many slaves they bought, what they paid for each of them, whether they were men, women, boys, girls, how tall they were, all of that. Why it is important is because in the context of Britain at the time, they were actually buying not human beings, but they were buying cargo. And why they need to have all that information, and we can go back in the records and show you exactly what it is, is because like cargo, from time in from time immemorial, you are to insure it. So most of those slave ships actually insured the slaves. So if you really want to know what the slave ships what was the name of the slave ship that left the port in Ghana? We can tell you what it is. How many slaves they actually bought? We can tell you what it is. 
I can't tell you if there were 3,000 men and 6,000 women and four, four ch children, we can tell you all of that because yeah. you had to ensure them. I'm going to tell you a quick little thing that might be interesting for you. There is, a, there is, actually, a, a, there is actually a a case where a slave ship threw overboard some slaves and they went to the insurance company and was insisting that the insurance company should pay them for the loss of cargo. When that case went to England, the problem was they had to decide whether the slave ship, the slave ship had the right to claim for the slaves that they threw overboard. <laughs> The argument was that they threw them overboard because they were too heavy, and if they didn't throw them overboard, the entire ship would sink. Well, yeah. to our surprise, well, not to my surprise, but to everybody's surprise, the ruling was that they had the right to throw over the, the, the slaves, and the insurance company should pay them. Why? Because they were cargo. They were not human beings. Huh? Don't repeat that. They were not human beings. So they and were not human beings, they were cargo. They were cargo. Now, what that established is the concept that we call chattel slavery. It, it concretized the idea that slaves were not people, they were cargo. They were not treated as. And they were, no, they were cargo. Why? Because they were property. And they bought them, and they owned them, and they could dispose of them as they feel like. And the idea that you threw them overboard to save the other people, cargo is also an important thing and the courts rule that the cargo must and was insured and the insurance company must pay the shipper for those slaves that they threw overboard <laughs> so I, just to, I just thought it's something that's important when you talk about when you talk about slaves slaves yeah. our slavery in the caribbean is what we call shackle slave slavery and it means that the human beings were like horses or like donkeys. They were actually physically not considered human beings. Okay? We call it shuttle slave. No. All right, hold, hold, hold that thought for a minute. So they're yeah. asking some question. Simple things outreach. Yep. The ship logs even show how many slaves they threw overboard. Badu blacks, the slave ship itself simple. <laughs> Can't believe. Or anyone in particular, you say they throw slaves overboard. Wow. Um, they actually called out four four, they actually called our four parents. What? Cattles, SME. Shuttles, shuttles, shuttles. Shuttles, yeah. Simple things, Badu. When they got too sick, or those who died, they throw them overboard as well. Dana Van Carr, absolutely correct. Yeah, you can go ahead now. Can finish. Thank you, thank you. So, so we are now making it clear that there is a legal basis for us to discuss reparation. Why? Because the initial act of taking somebody from Africa, irrespective of what any British court says, is a crime. Because a human being, not not a horse, or not a donkey was forcibly put on a ship and that person was put there without their consent that is kidnapping even yeah. the guy said i bought the person what we now know is that human trafficking exists today so somebody yeah. takes somebody and kidnap them take them to somewhere somebody pays them for the person we still call it kidnapping and we call it human trafficking in slavery that is human trafficking. So legally, nobody can argue that human trafficking and slavery is not the same thing. Why? As I said before, no African took a ticket, bought a ticket to go on a slave ship to come to Jamaica to become a slave. They were all taken here against their will. That's kidnapping. That's a crime. So there is a legal basis for reparations a right. crime was committed and that crime must be addressed that's the first thing so everybody who's listening to me from today onwards do not accept any argument that africans sold africans to slave owners and all of that. that's nonsense the the crime no no that's a part three that's part three 
um, um, I have a small audience in front of me and they are also China responding to me. And they're asking me about what is the step for reparation. You need to tell them to log on to the platform and ask you yeah, on yeah, the platform. Actually, I think one or two of them are on the platform. The truth of the matter yes. is they basic, you basically must understand that if I tell you what is the basis for reparation, Patrice will kill me because you say that must be the very last part three, right? So yeah. she wants you to come back to, to listen to me for part three when we discuss what are the foundations and the basis for paying Repar that reparation. reparation. So she asked me to just outline the basis, the case for reparation. And the case yes. is very strong. So most persons, and I said from today, don't let get go ahead. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. So, so as I said before, do not let anybody tell you any nonsense about Africans selling Africans to, 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 to the Europeans, and that is why that is it's not. Kidnapping is a crime. Human trafficking, even in the, the 17th century, was a crime. And slavery started out with a crime. Any fruit that comes from any root that is illegal, that fruit is also corrupted, right? So let us right. make that clear. The law is clear about that. If you somebody steals something from, from this supermarket, bring it to your house and you buy it from them, you are part of an, an illegal act and you have to give back that product. That Slavery's basis is an illegal basis. This is right. social that all the intellectuals are talking about reparation, the queen and all that. Most of that is missing the most important issue. That okay. the first act that starts slavery, which is the slave trade, started from an illegal act itself. And that, everything that streams from that is corrupted. That's it. Yeah. So the slave owners, the shippers, the, the insurance companies, the banks that provide the investment, they're all party to an illegal act. Okay? So let us leave that as it is. No, so I'm asking you, I'm asking a question that most people probably want to hear if they don't already know it already. Back then, did anyone have a choice? Or they just take you up and just tell you, say, I'm going to be a slave and you just have to be a slave? Well, the last time I spoke to a slave, they said to me that they didn't have a ticket on a slave ship. My answer to you is that there's nobody that left Africa <laughs> that, that went on a slave ship, smiling all the way to the Caribbean, that they were to come asleep. You ask, you ask them if they have a choice, they had no choice. They were either taken as slaves or captured. And let me make it clear again, they're trying to give you the impression that throughout the entire slave trade every slave that came on a slave ship was a slave that somebody bought that's not true in the last part of the slave trade europeans went with guns and went into africa with guns like it hunting down horses or, or hunting down tigers they went captured people put them on yokes tie up them foot on with ropes and chains and took them to a port and send them to the caribbean they cost them absolutely nothing. So the myth that goes around that every slave that came to the Caribbean was a slave that somebody bought. That's not true. There are many slaves that came to the Caribbean that in Africa, they were hunted down like animals and they were taken, put together on chains and sent on ships and they weren't bought at all. So that's wow. another myth. Let me clear that up. It's not every slave that was bought in Africa. People hunt them down like animals, like rabbits and like tears, capture them, put chains on them and carry them to a port, and that is it. Okay? So that's yeah. good. <laughs> oh, my word. So we were really treating worse than animals then, because at least animals would have the opportunity to run, run, and run fast. <laughs> Simple thing, say, the last time you spoke to a slave, LOL. <laughs> Well, well, Patrice asked me if, if, if anybody had a choice, and I tell her that nobody had a choice. But the last name I spoke to, he clearly told me that he did not. He guaranteed, he told me he did not give his consent to go on a slave ship, right? So let me make that clear. No slave that came to the Caribbean actually happily jumped on a slave ship and said, thank you, Lord, I'm going to the Caribbean to become a slave. 
That is not true. They were all taken here by force. Okay, so we've established the legal basis that the initial thing was a crime. Now, here's what is important. One, they are not human beings anymore. They are just cargo. Your great, 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 great grandfather was simply something like a horse. All right, hold, hold a minute before you move on to another one. Badu Black TV said, why didn't they fight though? <laughs> well, the answer to that is simple. Many of them, many of them did fight, but I think. Hold on, hold on. Him say, let me finish what him says so you can't answer it. Him say, why didn't they fight though? I would rather die than be a shackled. Well, they did. Many of them died. Many of them died. A matter of fact, I think that this, this particular topic is important on two levels. It is important because most of what we should know about slavery is not taught in primary school, but it's not taught in high schools. They tell you about European history and about Napoleon and all of that, and they deliberately don't tell you anything about slavery. Now, there are slaves that actually mutinate ships. Mutiny means that they fight off the people on the ship and took over the ship. Right, yeah. and then, and and those people actually decided that rather than become a slave, they jump off and join themselves. A matter of fact, many slaves, women who were on this journey, who were pregnant, rather than letting their children die in the Caribbean as slaves, they jumped off those boats and joined themselves rather than let their children become slaves. Okay. Yeah. So, in very really, what you need to know is that. Some of your ancestors in Africa died fighting. They didn't just simply just happily say, come, chain my hands and carry me on a slave ship. They didn't do that. They fought like hell. But remember this, a musket when it catch your head, it blow your head off, right? And if you're yeah. a slave and you see somebody shoot somebody head off and it clearly blow it off, you're not kind of a kind of a kind of become a little more practical. A lot of time we're trying to, we're thinking about this thing in some kind of like movie type of thing. You cannot understand what it is to be in a concentration camp if you're a Jew. But you truly can't, can't understand how atrocious it is to be in a slave ship and to go across the Atlantic in a smelly thing that people don't, they're not taken out every day. Like every other or every two days, they're taken out there. So they have to actually urinate, defecate, vomit, whatever, and they're not fed. They simply bring them up so they can get oxygen and they send them down back. And they'll be, they, they wash them off because they're messy with all kind of things and so on. Now, here's the important thing. Because they're not considered human beings, they treat them like they're not human beings. Okay? My so if God. you go down near the sleep hole and find a, 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 a sick, 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 sick um, um, African, they simply take him up or take her up throw her overboard because she's going to contaminate the place. That's what's going on. <laughs> but, they, but Africans did fight. And Africans did, 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 did take over ships and so on. But there's not a small number of them. Because the truth is that they are, by the time they're in the middle of the Atlantic, they are weak. They can't fight much. Here's another thing you need to understand about that, that journey. And I'm talking about the journey before we get to slavery itself. Because until you understand the psychological pain that Africans went through before they become a slave, you can appre you can't appreciate exactly what the issue is when they come on a sugar estate. That's another story. But let me explain this to you. One of the things that they did it on the slave ships is that they basically took persons from different, 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 different tribes, and that was deliberate. Now, yeah. I ask you all if you have some time to look at the list to go and watch a, a, a series called Roots. Some of you might be old enough to, to know about Roots, but most of you might not be. Roots is a series written by a guy called Alex Haley, and he outlines a story about Africans from the time they were on a slave ship till they become, they went, they went into America and become slaves. But there's the most important part of that series is when they were on the two separate things, okay? Don't and and I, I know that question was coming and I prepared myself to just make you understand that is part of what they sell you so you do not want to, to look at and concentrate on what itself was. All right, 
simple things outreach to say again no i don't the i don't think it's um irrelevant because records show that many of the chief or leaders actually know what their people come that what their people were coming into yet continue doing it that's absolutely not true <laughs> it's that's not nonsense no, about no, even no, what no, 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 i'm telling you now right. the europeans record show that those chiefs did not understand what slavery was on the other side of the atlantic why because many of those same chiefs were ultimately captured and turned into slaves themselves and when they came to the caribbean if they lived they were still believing that they would treat them like chiefs and they treat them just like every other african slaves most persons in africa didn't even know what existed past the ports of, of, of Ghana. They didn't know. They didn't understand what nobody was taking pictures of slaves being whipped and sending back to these chiefs and said, listen, this is what we're doing to your African people when we capture them. It's not true. It's the in the world was. Trade was a simple thing. Mm -hmm. Wars were simple things. We are trying to think about a time, trying to use modern thinking in a time that is so far in the past that we do not understand we have a term for that it's called an anachronism we do not understand that we can't judge or understand things very well that is so back in the past so a, a tribe a, a chief in africa and the person who's asking this i don't remember what our name is you need to go back in the time and ask one of those chiefs if they truly knew what happened to an african when he goes on a boat and he's taken to the caribbean if one of those chiefs come back and tell you that, yes, I know, they beat them and they do this to them and the devil knows what to them, then I can't buy what you're saying. But the truth is, that is not true. There's enough records to prove that most of those chiefs didn't even know what happened to them when they went on the ships, much less when they, come, when they came to the Caribbean. All right, simple things. All right, hold a minute. Simple things because she wants to understand, I guess, or she, this is her opinion. She said, it's not nonsense, Donovan. Even Walter Rodney addressed it in his writing. She yeah. said, I agree that it doesn't de detract from the atrocity that slavery actually was, but it's not irrelevant. All right, let, 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 let me ask, what's her name? I didn't get her name. All right, let, let, me, let me explain something to you. Whether the chiefs gave them voluntarily or sold them, they're by the by the time we were getting to the end of the slave trade, the Europeans didn't even bother to go and buy slaves from any chiefs or anybody like that. They simply hunt down Africans, sometimes as far as in the Congo, and let them walk from the, from the Congo all the way to the West Coast. And who died along the way, so be it. It didn't matter. You see, there, this idea that there is some kind of moral reprehension, uh, reprehension to take place Ted, Africans soul Africans, it does, this, this is not important. Slavery was existed to enrich white Europeans in the Caribbean in, and in the United States. That's what Caribbean slavery was to do. It didn't matter how those slaves came about, whether they bought them, whether they hunt them down, what they came for was to work on estates, whether it's cotton estates or sugar estates or tobacco estates, to enrich a group of persons who saw these black people as inferior. So we must not forget that. Let us not get this, you know, distracted or, 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 or misled along a path to, to, to make that be the this part of the discussion that we start from. For instance, does that change the fact that we must get paid for rep reparations for slavery? No, it doesn't. It does not, because I proved to you that none of those persons that were bought actually actively said I wanted to come to the Caribbean. So they were forced to come to the Caribbean. The idea that they were bought is also something that is important, because if I, sell, if I sold you a slave, but you treat him like, oh, I was treating my slave before, then basically I'm saying that I'm just selling you my labor and I'm taking the money for it. What they did was to buy these slaves and to take them to the Caribbean and ask them to work for absolutely zero, no money. The boat lands at somewhere in Port Royal or somewhere in, in Port Antonio or somewhere. 
the slaves comes off the boat. They are stripped naked. They are washed off. And they are paraded around. And people feel them up and touch them up and look in their teeth like you're looking at horses and so on. So the, the, the dehumanization of somebody, of an African, that was, a, say, a tribal chief. And he's, think about that psychologically. And he's now standing up. And he's probably six feet, two inches, and looking down on some short five feet, four inches white man who's at the tip up to look in, to look up in his teeth and open his mouth and say, this one is not bad, his teeth is that. And then talking, it's like you're talking to about an, a, a racehorse or something. That's where the dehumanization starts from. So I'm saying to you that let's, let's forget Africa, how they got here. No, they're actually physically in the Caribbean. Their journey into slavery is now really and truly beginning. The question is, this person will probably live for around, say, 25 years or more, most likely, if he's not whipped to death. And for all of those 25 or 30 years, if he stays alive, he's only fed enough to make him come back the next day to come and work at sunrise and stop working at sunset for 20 to 25 years. The question is, Whatever he produces, the labor cost input to that is absolutely minute. In some cases, it doesn't exist at all. So slavery on an economic basis, remember I tell you about the, the legal basis for reparation. Persons were taken here because it was a crime that started that process. Now let's deal with the economics of it. Slavery benefited the persons who had plantations. The persons who worked on the plantations either were paid or they were not paid. The ones that were not paid, in the real world, we should pay them. Why? Because the cost of labor is an important component in a labor-intensive thing like growing sugar. The most important part of growing sugar is the land and the labor that you need to grow that sugar. If the labor is zero or near zero, then what you're making in terms of profit is enormous. So let us kind of start winding up this particular part of part one. The economics for reparation is vastly important. Why? Because the wealth of Europe, of England, the massive castles and, and mansions that you see that people, when you drive through England, you see these enormous mansions and with all kind of grass and lawns and people are, can still go through them and whatever. Most of that was built on the backs of either Indians or, or, or West Indians or Indians, whether they're Africans or they're Indians, whatever they were, the growth and the power of colonial Europe was on the backs of their colonies. And the Caribbean says that that wealth and that power came about, and we need to ask you a simple question. If it came about through a means that was immoral, unjust, and to some extent illegal, somebody must pay. And I am saying to you tonight, that, that we will try to figure out who must pay. But that's clear yet who must pay, right? But I'm telling you tonight that in my mind, my great, 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 great grandfather was probably whipped to death or something like that. And I am telling you that somebody is going to pay reparation. Whether I live to see it or not, somebody's going to pay reparation. Now, let me end on this note. The Jews received reparations from Germany for World War I and World War II. The Japanese paid reparations to the Koreans. The Italians paid reparations. The, Aust the English paid, paid reparations to persons, to the to people's persons in New Zealand, the native people in New Zealand, and so on and so on and so on. So this idea that people pay reparation 
It's not a novel thing. The only person that they don't want to pay reparations or on the race that they don't want to pay reparations is black people. White people can pay white people reparations, but black people shouldn't be paid reparations. Well, that is where the story begins. Reparation is a moral and a legal thing, and we must pursue it, and we must not tell our children or our grandchildren that slavery is gone and let's forget it and you know let's forget all of that and let's <laughs> i'm telling you that the riches of europe and the riches in england came about because they basically found a way to let labor in north america and the caribbean be as little or none at all somebody has to give us back some of it all right all that thoughts um uh, mr dowie simple yes. things